What's up guys? Welcome. Today we got Mr. Sean Clarita, Mr. 212 in town. Um, and we were hitting a little bit of chest. Sean hit me up a couple days ago. I didn't even know he was going to be in town. I didn't even know what he was here for. Can I say what you're here for? Yeah, you can say. Okay. <laughs> he's moving to the area. I'm freaking pumped about it. I don't know if it's super secret. Um, so I'm pretty pumped that obviously he's going to be moving in the area. But anyway, hit me up and said, uh, what's your split? I kind of talked back and forth a little bit and yeah. just said, uh, I'm pretty laid back schedule this week. Still training a little bit normal. Terrence is out of town. So I just said, what do you want to train? We'll make it work. Yep. And so he wants to work on chest a little bit. And um, so anyway, I asked him when he came in, aside from wanting a bigger chest, did you want to do some specific movements or kind of go through my yeah. workout or whatever? And so we just went through some of the things that I like to do. Um, well, more than even the specific movements was trying to give him just some general feedback on how he was doing some stuff, some of his positions. And hopefully more than getting a good workout, although we did have a good workout, yeah. so that was good. Absolutely. But even more than getting a good workout, which is great, I was trying to give him some stuff that he can obviously take past this session um, and hopefully make some improvements on the way he's doing stuff. And then ultimately, most importantly, lead to some improvements with his physique. Um, so obviously for me, I'm always trying to have that nice balance of, I know he already knows how to train, I know he already knows how to train hard. So it's just, you know, little small percentages off of that. And, uh, and again, trying to still have a session where we feel like we got something done, yeah. still have a little education there, balance all that stuff, so it's not just me talking the whole time. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I'll let Sean say anything else he wants to say. That's <laughs> about it. So yeah, like, like Joe said, uh, I'm in the area looking at houses. Um, I knew he was down here. I knew, I, I followed Joe for a long time now, and I hit him up actually months ago, saying, hey, I have to come down to my off season and train with you, get some, some tips, I, some ideas. Cause I, again, I followed him for a long time. I see what him and Terrence have done. And I'm a big fan. And uh, for someone who's looking to always improve and get better, I'm always learning. And I want to learn from the best. And I consider Joe as one of the best in the game when it comes to education, technique, form, the whole nine yards. Um, and something we learned today is just more so positioning for myself. Um, it's not always about just slamming the weight, slamming the weights. It's almost about cutting it down, taking it slow, and really perfecting that uh, form, which is something I learned a lot today. Um, for someone like myself, I'm a strong lifter, um, but I, I noticed myself today going through some of the movements that my form isn't 100%. Um, so getting the help today is something I want to take with me as I go back home. Uh, I'll perfect that as I move forward in, into the 2022 season. And uh, this won't be the last time hopefully I'll get to train with you. And uh, oh, yeah. you know, hopefully get some you know some legs in and yeah. some back and some other movements. So. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, bro, glad to have you, man. Pleasure, Thanks for pleasure. coming. Thank you. Enjoy the session, guys. Oh, and don't forget to do that YouTube thing. Did I say that, Trevor? Did I say the YouTube thing? <laughs> I, I did not. So the YouTube thing. Like, subscribe, uh, share. Follow Sean. If you don't follow Sean, you do YouTube? Absolutely. Okay, check out his YouTube. Anything fancy or just Sean Clarita? Sean Clarita, I'm pretty Find boring. It. Instagram, check him out over there as well, too. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy the sessions. As always, you have some questions, comments, concerns, or just a place to have your feelings validated, that's what the comment section is for. So get down in there and get rowdy. Till the next one, guys. Peace. Do like... um. Normally I do like a fly variation. It's kind of like flat, slight decline that I like a lot. So we'll see how that feels on you. Um, but if I'm doing, yeah, if I'm doing more flat stuff, and I mean some are more decline stuff, it tends to be more flies. Okay. Um, but sometimes we'll do like, I'll do dip variations every once in a while, but that's obviously depending on a lot of things, getting in the right position, make sure it feels good. Yeah. But that can, again, depends on the individual shoulder, whether it's a great fit or not. So I'll start to get this to set up and then I'll do some like warm up stuff that I normally do as well too. So I'll take a look at like, Whenever I'm training anything, like we're trying to be pretty religious about, you know, some of the prep stuff that I do is the joints that are involved, just try and take them through their full range of motion. And so the thing that I like to do with that is without getting too like in depth, when we're looking kind of, we're gonna look at your shoulder blades, look at like your GH joint, maybe look at like your elbows and stuff a little bit. And sometimes when you do that, you can see like, if you can't like move your shoulder blades well, you can't move them in certain directions. Like one, it gives you an idea of like, okay, maybe that's stuff that I need to work on. And then two, it's just something you can incorporate like in your warm up routine. Cause that's half of it when people say, oh, I don't have stability in my shoulder blades or that can be a part of it, who knows what it is. I guess the stability is a tricky word. It's really hard to define, but more than anything, you should have really good control over every joint that you've got. So one is like the ability to just move your shoulder blades in all direction and how well you can do that will probably translate to your ability to do a lot of things like pressing being one of them. And then we can just look too and see if you have any like side to side stuff. It doesn't have to like mean much, but if we see one side moves really well, one side doesn't move well, Again, it can just be stuff to be kind of aware of. And um, so as we go through some of it, it'll be like a little bit slower for the warm-up stuff. But like most of the time when we get started, I'll just do it in between warm-up sets. So as we're going up, you know, whatever 50 pounds at a time, we'll do some shoulder blades, we'll do some for different joints, that kind of stuff. I'll show you as we go through. Some of it's like from a mechanic standpoint, if at the bottom, like all this stuff kind of lines up the same height, it's really easy for your front delt to just want to pull everything across. Yeah. Where it's literally matters. So some of it is as the shoulder blades pull back at the bottom, that kind of makes your chest, relatively speaking, higher than your front delt. And that's also where that little bit of an arch comes in. So when, when you come up to the top, we'll see on some fly stuff, 
it's fine to let the shoulder blades kind of pull out of position, but in my opinion, practicing at the bottom, really keeping that chest tall as you really retract hard, it'll put your pecs in a way better position to start and do more work. Um, so probably do one more of those, but in between, I'm going to have you do just a little rotator cuff stuff. So just kind of have your arms at maybe 45-ish degree angle. I'll just show you first. And basically, you're just going to internally rotate as far as you can, and then externally rotate as far as you can. So same thing, most of what I'm doing actively myself, I just take to the end and hold. So just get as far, as soon as you feel resistance, wherever you feel resistance, just squeeze the muscle that's getting you there, hold it for three to five seconds, and then back. So wherever you want to have either somewhere like this or even just go straight out and just visualize making um, circles with your shoulder blades. So like I'll show, I'll show you first, yeah, so I'll show you basically just start with retraction, elevation, and then go into protraction, and then depression, and then back together with the bottom. And so just trying to make some big circles as you go, and just seeing how much you can move your shoulder blades. starting to help to get in a little bit better control of that. That's one of the things too is like one, I like to do all that stuff just so it helps maintain range of motion. Because that's a joke obviously like bodybuilders just keep getting bigger and bigger. It's a joke it's just like this. It's like, like I got good range of motion here, I got good range of motion here, but like nowhere else. And so half of it is a good way to preserve range of motion. But also like it's I like active stuff. So if you're gonna try and open up range of motion actively going there and makes a bigger difference as opposed to just going like passive stretching. So I think it's a good tool too is you can increase range of motion by consistently doing something where you're going for those end ranges of motion. One of the biggest things for anybody like you that's kind of like delt dominant is um, getting in a really good position out of the bottom. The bottom of your press is the bottom of your flies because there's going to be a position where if your delts start the motion, it's so much harder to find your chest the range yeah. of motion. So this is like a really nice drill I like that helps you find what I think is a really good position in the bottom. But I like this because now you actually have to actively pull it into the bottom. So yeah. yeah, and so what I want you to feel at the bottom, just like you would row, is the exact position you normally be in, but really pull aggressively, pull the shoulder blades as hard together as you can, and at the same time push your chest up. And I like, I'll do this sometimes just as another way to warm up as well too. It just warms up all your upper back stuff, all your shoulder stuff. So basically everything like obviously shoulder to shoulder. So just the bottom, pull together hard, push your chest up, and then hold as low as you can get it. So on these, like, you're not gonna, it's impossible to mess something up. Like, obviously, we put a ton of weight on it way too low, you know, you can mess up your shoulders, but if you're actively pulling in as far as you can, pull the shoulder blades together, push the chest towards the ceiling, and I'm gonna have you hold these for like three to five seconds. So you're not really doing anything on the way up, you just kind of let the bands go, and then actively pull down, squeeze the shoulder blades, three, two, one. Probably have to do five or so like that.
top set, back off set. Probably that's it. So most things would be two to three sets today. Gotcha. I want you to think about the same stuff. Obviously, especially when the weight's a little bit lighter. Really throw it in. Still have that feel from the barn to your chest nice and tall, yeah. really good there. If I want you to think about something is at the end, just hit a little pause, mm -hmm. like what you pretty much are doing already. And, yeah. and then make sure you try, try as much as you can from that position. Hopefully you should feel a little bit more of a stretch in the pec than maybe you normally do. The more retracted, the more elevated you are. So really try your best to just kind of smoothly initiate from across there. Yeah, so it's, okay. as opposed to, once you have a muscle where you feel like, all right, this muscle I got nailed, like the connection's great, whatever it is. Like I like aggressive contractions. But when we're at the bottom here, and obviously your tendency might be for your front delts to take over, just try to get a little bit slower and just feel like, you know, instead of again getting too much up, you really feel like, am I pulling across to initiate? And the thing that I want you to think about when you finish is I'm gonna actually have you hold reps for just a second. Okay. And I'm gonna put my hands like right on your biceps. And as opposed to feeling like up with the bar, I actually want you to, feel, I'm not gonna press hard, but I want you to feel like you're finishing, pressing into my hands just a little bit. Does that make sense? Yeah, and so basically, yeah, because you're, I mean, you're going to finish the exact same spot you would be without but, me. But just yeah, but it's, here yeah, it's going to give you a little less thought about bar up and have, as you come into the finish, really think a little bit more about arms across. And then me actually touching a little bit will actually give you a little bit of feel back for something to basically feel like, okay, I can actually contract, contract into the top of the press. When you're pressing, it's like if you've got the range of motion, just to check, it's like, am I actually using my pecs the whole time? Because like you say, yeah, at the bottom, you might obviously have some pec-ish, but a lot of people just kind of finish with this little, like kind of pop at the top instead of contract across. Once you kind of integrate stuff, you know, you just kind of put it into your workouts, you kind of do what the normal patients do. I think like the further along most people get, you should spend a little bit more time actually thinking about practice. I guess I joke, we have the only sport where nobody practices, right? Because okay. technically, like on stage is in the competition, right? Yeah. Everyone says like, in the gym is technically the competition. Like this is where you're trying to obviously make progress. But if this is the competition, then why I say is when does everybody practice? And nobody practices their training. They don't ever like, they just get them more up, more up, up. And half the way to integrate it, I say is really take your time with your warm ups. And because again, for you, some of it obviously is still gonna be the same stuff. You gotta put more weight on the bar if you want something to get bigger. But whereas again, once you get the people that don't ever put more weight on the bar, and they just intentionally, like, I'm just gonna squeeze harder, squeeze harder, squeeze harder. It's like, you can't squeeze harder and get bigger. Yeah. But when you're already strong, you know, where it's like the difference for you might be getting a little bit more out of like three plates and a quarter as opposed to four plates. Absolutely. And then from there, it's like, okay, you take, you know, a step backwards eventually to make multiple steps forward. Eventually get back to that. Yeah, and you get to that point. Because that's the thing too, if you're at, if you're at, it's all hypothetical, but if you're at, your, let's say your form's eight out of 10 for a pressing movement and you're doing four plates. Well, if you get it to a 10 out of 10 at three and a quarter, 
and then move back up to four plates with a 10 out of 10, something's gonna be bigger. And so that's like the little stuff I think about where it's like, cause obviously that's the thing too, is it can't all just be on paper stuff, right? Like obviously if it was just a matter of you training chest twice as often, it'd be a really easy fix. But some of it is obviously just the way that you're yeah, training. Form. Yeah, it's form and stuff. And so we always think, I always tell people like, again, the funny thing is people at your level get less offended than like the normal guys. I'm like, just realize like form is never an end point. Like I feel like I have some pretty good form, but I'm still working on shit every single time I'm in here. I don't let it like mess up my workouts. Like today we might talk a little bit more than normal, but half the time, like when I'm training, when Terrence is training, I just take my time in my warm-ups. Like in between, I might be like, okay, how's this moving? Okay, can I get my shoulder blades moving better? Like think about a couple of those cues. And then by the time, like whatever we'll get to work in sets today, we've got what we got, we get the most out of it. But that way you're actually like, again, I think about your warm-up sets of practice. And that's taking some time to actually, okay, I gotta improve the way that I'm doing this. And it all, it all integrates. I mean, you know? just doing this alone, I mean, kind of like get the cues now. I get back to home. I always, I always go to the either first or second movement. Yeah. Now I don't better really engage with the upper back. Yeah. yeah. Keep the chest high. Yeah. Usually it's just you know, boom, boom. Yeah. I never worry about the back. Yeah. And it's always just front, 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 front. front. Yeah. I'm thinking that's all show. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You'll see that anytime we do like like a close grip variation, squatting patterns, then I like to have a pretty big offset from top to bottom. Like this is probably changing the weight, maybe like 30 pounds top to bottom. Yeah. And uh, and so generally just to make it a little bit harder, you know, basically making the, the, the top of the motion, especially when we're taking these cues, like right now you're practicing them well, but especially when we get into working sets, hopefully even though that's not a huge difference, you'll feel we're normally at the top, like you said, the bottom is the hard part, so a lot of people just kind of to finish. Where this way, like you'll notice a subtle difference of like where it normally starts to get a little bit easier, you have to work equally hard. Um, and so for me, most of the time, I pretty much always put bands on wherever I think it makes the range of motion like more equally challenged, challenging for the entire range of motion. So I always joke, because people are like, oh, bands, but like I think there's a thing to people learn how to do movements properly without bands. But I use it's the same thing as why people like old school equipment. It's because of the cams. Like the cams make the loading pattern different. And when they're well designed, you can feel it. It's like more, it should be more challenging through the whole range of motion. A lot of times you get on a piece of equipment, it's like, feels really hard in one place, feels like nothing in another place or yeah. something. Normally it's just poorly designed. And so that's my thought process with bands as well too, is I'm, I just want to make it more challenging through the entire range of motion. And so if it's set up properly, I just, I think they're a great tool. And especially the same thing, like there's where, is it, you know how bodybuilding is, with genetics and everything inside, it's like tough to say like, well, I'm gonna use like a Ronnie Coleman example, which isn't bad. It's like, well, if you're Ronnie Coleman, you could do all those things. Like Ronnie Coleman never used bands. It's like, well, you might have to train slightly more efficient than Ronnie Coleman. <laughs> yeah. and, that, and that's the only argument. Honestly, yeah. it is a little bit split here. It's like, well, if I can make this a little bit more challenging, a little bit more efficient for the entire range of motion, I think that translates well to people at a higher level. Um, and I also like, I'm, I'm more of a lower volume guy in general. So, and that's, that lends itself to more efficient use of your range of motion. Or I joke if you have an exercise where it's like, it's only challenging at one point or something. It's like, how many sets do I have to do with that to get whatever stimulus? Where if I have a different variation where it's challenging for the whole range of motion, arguably it makes a lot more sense how you can kind of lower volume that way. You're getting more out of less. And I always like that notion as well too, because like, I think volume is the orthopedic killer. In bodybuilders, where people have orthopedic joint issues or whatever, it's almost never load. Like load, if you have shit form and you go really heavy, like that'll speed up the process that things yeah, getting hurt. But and most every bodybuilder, it's like overuse stuff. So it's like this one thing, which again, this position's not too bad. And then I do the bodybuilder thing, and I do a billion working sets for a billion reps over the course of how many decades. And then it's like, oh shit, now my elbows hurt, now my knees hurt, now my whatever. Better. Yeah. Chest nice and tall. Push that chest towards the ceiling as you're rowing it.
only way you can do at least one you know, force rep or so. Yep. And so I just really want you to think about like, instead of just thinking like, ah, fuck, I gotta get it up. I still think just across, across. That's all I want you to think about. So I'm gonna drive that bicep right across your middle. take that big arch. So I think the arch on decline stuff is even more beneficial. Okay. So if you look at basically like the line of the cable in my upper arm, and where kind of my lower pec line is, yeah. like when I'm flying, like that all lines up pretty darn well. So I'm not really actually thinking more of a flat fly. Okay. I'm actually thinking a little more of a decline. So when I finish, again, if I imagine the point basically right here, this is where I visualize like I'm trying to bring my bicep across to. So obviously it's not gonna quite get there, but I'm just smashing them together right in there. Good, good hard contraction. And the same on this one, the roller really lets your shoulder blades move a lot, which yes. I think is great for both ends. So yeah. this way, you know, really lets you stretch them back. And again, I think this will be a really good position for you to practice, because this will be one of the best places where your delt's more behind the joint yep. and your pec's more in front. So it should be a really good place to feel a nice pec stretch there. Yeah, and as you, more as you come to the finish, like when you're coming from here, you really want that advantage of the chest tall, where again, you don't want to be kind of in this pulled forward. Because you see when someone doesn't really know how to press, you get the people that are really bad, they're kind of like this type yeah. of deal. But at the bottom, it's a big deal. When you come across the finish, then you can think more across. I mean, your shoulder's gonna pull across at that point in time, which is fine, because if you imagine, like the pec pulls this way, your delt's gonna pull this way. So it doesn't really matter if it pulls forward as long as your thought process is to finish across. I'd rather have everything a little bit bent at the bottom, yes. and that can be a little bit more comfortable on the shoulder and your bicep. But then as you come to the cross, I almost straighten them a little bit and just focus on smashing that in there. You can literally obviously see tissue smashing on tissue as well. And I keep that the focus. You get a way better contraction than all oh, the hands touch them done. You know what I mean? And just come a little bit lower. So come up right up more like there. Yep. And keep that finishing nice and smooth. Okay. So, I mean, don't think about it. I'm just trying to think about this stuff. Just think about smashing them right there. There we go. And then at the bottom, I think chest tall, shoulder blades back. And you just squeeze the chest, pinch across. There we go. Down a little bit. 
this part. Of it. That's really good. It's going to be real smooth, I think. Don't think about where anything's ending up. Just kind of flat, just squeeze that as hard as you can. There you go. Good? Yep. A little bit smoother. If we're going slower into the finish, all right, squeeze and there you go. And just for now, intention. Go slower, slow down. Yep. Just really think hard, contract across. Yep. I've got last bit, you're literally just intentionally trying to make it, how hard can I make that contraction? There we go. Where you're going to mess up on moving right like if from from the start you, you start with your chest pretty damn well yep. and if you finish really well with your chest no one messes up in the middle right like people like they'll start by launching it or as you come into finish like that's why i wanted you to go really slow there too because again being dealt down it's really easy to come in and there's a subtle difference between letting the pet kind of pull your shoulder around which is fine or as you come to the finish like ah, this is hard for my pec and just kind of letting that delt kind of pull over yeah. and go forward so that's why i want you to just practice that again is when you're coming to the finish if you keep the focus on how hard can I just contract that chest, I'm just trying to smash all that shit together, your chest is going to finish it. Yeah, Whereas if you, if you start to think about like, that's the same, obviously every reason everybody cheats on the last reps, as soon as it starts to hurt, it feels shitty, everyone's like, ah, fuck it, just get it over. Right? The biggest thing for me I'm learning right now is keep the chest high. Yeah. So I'm like, keep chest high, because at that point, then the shoulders are back. Yep. So chest high, chest high, chest yep. high, chest high. If not, it's yeah. just like that. Absolutely, yeah. And that's, again, that's that subtle difference where, especially keeping that chest high, difference. like you said, again, where it's the difference of, that same, like that smooth finish for here where it's just like that. Because yeah. you imagine obviously the pecs, obviously it's just, it's just strings basically. Yeah. Pulling those points together, it can pull around like that, which is fine. But like I said, if you get to the point where you're kind of here and you're kind of caving and going here, yeah. like you're actually making that pec longer at that point in time. That's what you think about it. You shouldn't be doing that with like seven, four, they just, oh, yeah. that's yeah. all yeah. shoulders yeah. at that yeah. point in exactly. time. Yeah. Yeah. And at that point in time, yeah, it's like, well, one, they don't realize <laughs> you're getting more muscles involved. But like I said, you're also shortening the range of motion. It's like, oh, because oh, yeah. everyone's always like, Focus on what they're holding on to. It's like, because yeah. if you look at this and you just focus on us, like, oh, look at him, he stopped them with those eight inches apart. Guys, the gym's like, oh, I'm touching them together. It's like, well, that, 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 that yeah, that, <laughs> that muscle that crosses over that joint doesn't care where your hands are finishing.
Make them hard now. Best reps. Hard across. Squeeze. There you go. Yeah, come on. Come on, another one. You got smooth. Find that chest. How hard can you squeeze? Good. Come on.
just know where the upper arm goes. Yep. It's gonna be doing a little bit more. I'm thinking about coming kind of towards the collar bone and up here. So you're gonna come and finish this thing. And this will always be a tough one. I want you to mess around with this as well too. Because generally the more you tuck, your front delts are always working, but it's really easy to just be like, I don't wanna use any of this at all, you know, and just let all the front delts do the work. So it's gonna be kind of tricky, like feeling like again, you're aiming that upper arm, you know, really across. Chest yeah, chest tie. That really part from almost everything is always going to be beneficial. And you just tuck the hands in just a little bit here, and we'll mess around with we'll see how you can But you'll feel how I have this loaded. This is fun to do for just like some cool drop sets and stuff as well. But I like to load it where you'll feel it obviously get heavier as you come to the top. Yep. So it'll help you find that kind of contraction. Day, two chest movements, a press and a fly, and then we do a, a third one that's kind of like a, a high incline. So it's when we're trying to kind of transition from you know chest to a little bit of chest, a little bit more front delt involvement. Yeah. And then we have a second uh, push pull day that we have now in the split, where I do another press and another fly. So generally I'm doing normally I'm more than two big like stuff that we like log book and track yeah. on a given day, and then. Um, I'll do like sometimes, depending on where we're at, a little bit of like more like metabolic pump work. So for today, like if we were doing this stuff like out, like this one, because we're moving a little bit quicker through this one, just to kind of move some blood around and hit some failure points a little bit quicker. Where like I like to do in the first couple, always more straight sets. Yeah. Like that would be the stuff that I would kind of like actually log book and track and progress. Yeah. And then I generally like always incorporate something for another, you know, 15, 20 minutes of where I'm just not always stuff that I'm doing exactly the same every single workout. But I'm just trying to hit maybe some things I didn't do with the first two movements. Um, and as long as I'm hitting some failure points, you know, training close practicing to failure, I still think it's still like effective stuff. So. Okay. Yep. Yep, another one. Back. 
So from here, I'm gonna give you a little manual resistance on it as well too. And then we're gonna superset to a four press. Gotcha. Um, so the first one here, we won't do anywhere near failure. We'll just do like a practice, so you get a feel for how I want you pressing it. I'll have you one warm up there too, make sure you got the rack height. And then once we got it all set up, we'll just do two working sets each. So we'll do one here to failure straight to that, and one here straight to that type of deal. But so all I'm gonna want you to do with this, is basically we're just doing a dumbbell fly. So the same as you normally would, nice stretch to the bottom, little pause. But as you squeeze up to the top, I'm gonna to get my hands in there and I'm gonna have you actually press into my hands to finish. So basically, obviously your fly is normally all good from here to here, but as soon as you stack, stuff drops off. So I'm gonna put my hands there. So basically you're contracting into the top. And then once we get to the working set, so this first one I'll probably just have you do five or six reps, just feeling how I want you. Cause I don't want you like cranking as hard as you can at the top. I want you from the bottom, just a nice smooth pace, squeeze in my hands and then the same reps from there. And then when we actually do a working set, as soon as you basically can't press too hard into my hands, I'll have you do a few just at the bottom, like a normal fly without me putting it on, and then we'll go over there. And just a nice stretch, chest tall, little pause. These are real smooth, yep. Yeah. And as you come up, just a light press in. Repeat, you get a pause, real smooth press in. Yeah. Just keep it real smooth out of the top of the trench. Pretty consistent with the pressure. Two more. Like I like this to finish because it's so locked in basically. Yeah. With the bar path, short range of motion. And so just basically make sure you find a comfy spot where obviously you feel like the bar is coming down good. So hopefully figure that out. And this here I like my feet straight. It's way more comfortable. I do like feet flat. I feel like feet feels a little yeah. more solid, but it's really personal preference. And this one just find the path you want. And just do five or six warm up. <laughs> make sure it feels good.
たいなそのバイグッドバイSweet, see you later. Depressing colors I've ever seen in my life. It makes me not want to work out. And then I remember when I had like I had like a jug or something. Oh yeah. And somebody came out and was like, you can't have jugs. And I was like, what do you mean you can't have jugs? Like, we don't allow jugs in here. And I was like, I'm just like, for what reason? And they're like, oh, you know, they're giving people trip on drugs. I was like, 
I mean, what's like the size limit? Like how many ounces am I allowed to have that I can't have a jug? And so I literally remember like they made me put it some weird spot and so I was like had it at the front. So like every time I'm working I had to like walk all the way up the front. It's like giving these people like a desk there. And I'm like, well I'll never come back Someone here again. Someone just did a Facebook rant or something on Instagram. A guy had a jar and it was yeah. yelling at him for it. She's like, what? Where's that rule at? Yeah. That I can't. He's, she's like, what's well, a rule? Yeah. Like, what? So he's like, I can't be hydrated. Got it. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's a gym. Why would we want to have that in the gym? Craziness.